Hi everybody and welcome back to my backyard once again. Today we're gonna take a look at the Potensic Atom. This is a sub 250 gram 3-axis gimbal 4K 60 little drone. Let's check it out because I was very very surprised by it. Let's go! Let's open the box and see what's inside. If you look at the back you can see a table of contents already. First of all you got a lot of paperwork, stickers, warning cards and manuals. You have a cardboard separator and boom this is the fly more combo it smells very very nice and it has a lot of premium features like you see this felt down here it makes the handle much softer also a couple of mesh pockets on the side and here you have a front pocket that doesn't have a zipper it's a shame but it has a lot of felt inside which is a premium finish and i didn't expect it and you have a couple of loops for the shoulder strap and boom, you have the accessory pouch up here and the real gear is down here. In the accessory bag you get a lot of extra propeller blades and the screwdriver with the screws to change those propellers. Safety instructions, three type of cables to connect your phone to the radio controller and the charging cable for the drone. In the main compartment you'll find the shoulder strap for the bag, two extra batteries and the charging hub for them. It has a barrel plug input and a regular USB output as a power bank. This is the charging hub adapter with the barrel plug. This is the radio controller, cool design. It opens like this, the antennas, and then boom, it extends to fit your phone into it. Gimbal sticks are on the bottom and they can screw in very nicely. It doesn't have many buttons, on off, return to home switch. The gimbals here feel very nice. On the top, you have photo, video, and the slider to adjust the gimbal tilt. It feels nice enough. It is not very heavy, so you need to be very, very careful with it. And finally, protected in this Velcro pouch, you got the drone itself. The arms are secured by this very safe loop right here. Let's remove all of the plastics. You have this gimbal cover to remove. And finally, it's time to open it. Look how small it is when closed. Boom. One, two, three, and four. Let's talk about specs. It is, of course, sub 250 grams. It is C0 class and the dimensions are these. It is software locked at maximum 120 meters high and you can go six kilometers out in FCC regions like US, Canada or China. If you are in Europe or in CE region, you will do maximum probably one kilometer in open fields with no interferences the signal will be much weaker. It has wind resistance level 5, which means up to 38 km per hour winds. And in sports mode, it can reach maximum 58 km per hour, which is not bad for such a tiny drone. In optimal condition, one battery will last 30 minutes of flying. The sensor is from Sony, 12 megapixel f2.2, one third of an inch size, which is smartphone-like. It will be very fine during the day, but during the night, you don't have a lot of light coming in. It's 4K, it does 4K 30, 2.7K 30, and 180p 60 maximum video recording, and 12 megapixel photos, of course. Very nice for an entry-level drone, it's stabilized by a three-axis gimbal, and this is what you have to look for. Don't buy drones that don't have three-axis gimbals. This is the button to turn it on, this is the height sensor, and this is a camera for landing where it started and for visual positioning. The USB-C port is directly on the battery, so you can charge the battery individually, super nice. And this is a SD card slot, which is also complementary. They give you a 64 gigabytes card. And boom, we are ready to fly and open the Potensic Pro app. I wish the app supported landscape mode because you need to use the radio like this when you enter the device. To take off, you can press this button or just do this with the gimbals and it takes off. The drone is super silent. Boom, let's go up and the transmission is fine. It's a little bit blocky sometimes, but for how affordable it is, it's fine. It reminds me of the Mavic Mini 1. If you want to change how fast the drone moves, you need to go into the settings and change it into sport mode. I wish they had it in the main menu because it's something I want to be able to access kind of fast. Let's uh, fly outwards and see how far it can go. It seems pretty, pretty fine to me. This is uh, 4K 30 maximum resolution. I feel like the videos are a little bit too contrasty and too oversharpened. I wish 
there was settings to change that. About one kilometer and still going is not bad for uh, CE mode. Okay, there is a strong wind, let's uh, stop because I don't want to lose it for the review. It's gonna be very hard to control it because uh, you see uh, very luckily was, was happening. So excuse me if the video is a little bit choppy. You can see the river down there. I'm gonna return home. I like this map application. They have very, very, very nice to have waypoints on such a affordable drone. Let's try the return to home, it's quicker. Do I have to keep pressing it? Yes. Yes, okay, now the return to home is working. This is the digital zoom, doesn't look too bad actually. As you can see, you can change the parameters manually, which is very nice for an entry-level drone. I wish they had more parameters. Let's go into photo mode with this button. You can do either only JPEGs or RAW plus JPEG. I'm gonna shoot a RAW plus JPEG of the mountain behind my house. It's hard to frame because it's a little bit laggy. I press the stick, one second later it updates. And I am right above my head with the drone. So let's take a photo. If you shoot RAW, it's gonna take a couple of seconds to save that photo. Still taking it. Okay, and we are done. The photos are fine for social media use, but don't try pushing the colors too much because they're gonna destroy the photo. Even the RAW is not uh, really that much editable. Let's try using the quick shots. The first one is pull away and it autom automatically identifies myself, which is super cool. I hope it doesn't crash because it doesn't have sensors. But, I mean, it's filming a good video, I have to say. Wow, I am impressed because <laughs> I didn't expect it to work this good. And it comes back. Let's try the chase mode. And actually it works pretty, pretty good in a way I didn't expect from a affordable drone again. Look at it. I mean, it's just like a, a tripod basically. Ah, no, 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 no. It's following me actually. Crazy. Oh, wow. I didn't expect it to be this good. It's dragging me through the tree. Look at it. <laughs> wow. I'm gonna try and fool it and disappear. What happens? Okay, picked up a plant. What happens if... Okay. If he loses you... No, he picked me up again. Okay, so Potensic, you did a very, very good job with the firmware. Can I move the drone? Ah, okay, if you move the drone, it exits the mode. But it's very, very spot on. Some, in some way, even better than DJI. I wish I could activate it a bit lower to the ground, because it doesn't let you do that. That's maybe a shame. You see? Yeah, it wants the drone to be higher. That's something probably against crashes. You have to be really, really high in order to work, for it to work. Let's try the rocket mode that goes directly upwards. It's a little bit slow, I have to say. I expected it a little bit faster. Also, I didn't start exactly on top of my head. Now it's going a little bit faster. It's good. I mean, this, you can do it yourself. You don't need the drone to do this kind of shot. Okay, let's try the circle mode. It picks you up even from far, which is not bad at all. Pretty, pretty nice. I want to see if he can do like a house, not only a person, because now I'm curious. You can draw a target, he picks it up, and... Okay, ah, uh, uh, okay, he doesn't uh, pick it up incredibly well. He needs to have some contrast, I believe. Yes. Okay, let's go with the pool, which is uh, a bigger target and a more contrasty one. Yes, he picked up the pool. He's going also kind of fast. He's doing a very, very good job at orbiting. For this kind of quick shots, it's the same basically as the Mini 3 Pro from DJI, probably even the Mini 4, which is remarkable for an affordable drone like this. Okay, let's spiral myself. For people, he picks them up incredibly good. Probably my white shirt helps a lot today, <laughs> but wow. I mean, I wish this drone didn't have the radio and had the buttons on top of the drone because it's working remarkably well with these automated modes. Look at it. Wow. Let's try the boomerang. 
boom, select myself and go, one rotation. Starts very slowly, it's gonna probably start go far and then come back in a rotation. Should be pretty cool, let's see. I wish it could start from lower because I'm always almost top down with this drone. Okay, it's going, it's going kind of fast, which I like. Shows you the whole area. I like this mode. Boomerang, one of my favorite. Wow. It's not bad at all. Look at it. I have to check that it doesn't hit any tree because it's going a little bit sideways. But I think it's gonna be perfectly fine. This mode, actually pretty, pretty good. I like it a lot. I guess that's pretty much it for the flying. I'm gonna show you the settings real quick. You can choose uh, meter per second or feet per second. Speed, you have sport, normal and video. Video goes a little bit slower so you can have smoother videos. Then what to do on signal load. Minimum return altitude, which you need to set as high as the highest thing you have here. Trees are not that high. I could set it to 30 meters. What the hell? I don't need that. Come on, I don't need that. <laughs> don't teach me, I'm explaining it. You have silent return, so you don't hear the beeping while it's coming back. Maximum altitude again, 120 meter. Maximum distance, you can set it to infinity. This is the battery information, very nice. Then in the calibration tab, you, have, you can calibrate everything, the compass, the gimbal, if you see, it's not perfectly horizon locked. And the remote controller. And here is for repairing, repairing the drone. Then you cannot really choose much. You have the pitch speed, for the wheel right here, stable or FPV for the gimbal, and you can select these kind of modes. In the camera, you can choose the white balance if you want a grid on your image, like this one for framing. Segmented recording is like every five minutes you take a video, it splits that. Then you can format your uh, card, enable the telemetry data, I guess it burns in into the video, and adds the GPS to the photo metadata. This is. And then in the about, there is not much, just information. Time for my final opinion on the Potensic Atom drone. I am impressed because I didn't expect it to work this good. Flight-wise works very nice. The drone hardware is very stable, it works very good, holds the wind, goes fast enough. For a tiny drone like this, it's doing what it needs to do. Control-wise it's pretty fine. I fly even high-end drones and these feels pretty adequate. When you move a stick, the drone moves immediately, is predictable. The only thing is you have a little bit of latency on the video reception. So if you are looking at the screen and moving the drone, you have to account for it and smooth it out and trust the process. You need uh, to learn how to do that. The menu is lacking the stick curve. I like applying a little bit of expo so it starts smoothly and when you do the moves it's even smoother, especially at higher speeds. Like I use many drones in sport mode but I have good curves so I can still have very cinematic moves and not jerk it out. And the same goes for the wheel. You can set the speed but I wish you can set a curve. The battery life is pretty fine. I flew for around 25 minutes before and I had like five minutes left and I flew. I even went one kilometer out in sport mode. Camera wise is decent for personal use, is probably not adequate for work. I wouldn't go to work with it. Personally, I expected a tiny bit better. The camera hardware is probably fine. It's the same sensor you see in uh, mid tier Android phones. And if you see what photos they take and what videos they take, I think it's the software. They need to improve the software a little bit more. It needs a little bit less contrast, a little bit less uh, sharpening, and it will be much, much better. The dynamic range is not very high, so you either expose the sky or you expose the ground. But for an entry-level drone, it's a fine camera. <laughs> you take photos in vacation during the day, and it's perfectly fine for social media use. The drone app works very fine, and what surprised me a lot is the intelligent flight features, which usually with these brands and these uh, entry-level drones, they are gimmicky. On this drone, they work incredibly good and sometimes better than DJI, and that was mind-blowing for me. And the tracking works very nice, and all the modes are actually probably useful. I wish you could set it up from lower height, because just give me a disclaimer, check your surroundings and let me have the drone follow me at one meter of distance instead of four meters up in the sky. That's my only complaint. So if you are looking for your first drone, a drone to learn on or a drone to film yourself maybe on holiday, this is a very good option in my opinion. 
you either get a 20 buck, 30 bucks, 40 bucks drones, then don't have cameras really, and you learn how to fly those, or you have to spend 250 bucks, 300 bucks to get a drone with a decent camera. Don't get anything in the middle because I feel like it will be a waste of money. If it doesn't have a three axis gimbal and a real good camera, don't even consider them because you will have crap video and it will be the same if you get the cheap drone from the start. This is a good option, the camera is decent enough, so I would recommend it. And the gimbal is real and it works good. The price of this drone is around 300 bucks with one battery and a radio controller, but on the official website I saw it already discounted at 270 bucks, which is crazy competitive also with other brands. And it offers a lot of functionality for that price. And as always, that's all for today. Remember to like, subscribe and comment on this video. Let me know what do you think about this drone. I am very surprised that it's competitive and that Potensic made such a good product. I hope they continue making this product, maybe also kind of more professional drones, because this is surprisingly good. If you want to buy something, check out the links in the description below. You will help this channel a lot and also probably you will find a discount right there. Stay safe and happy flying. Bye.